Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back on a windy Iowa day. I don't know if we have any announcements tonight, Jim. Anything we should be announcing? I think as long as everybody's on track with the projects, that's the main thing at this point. Um, this evening, uh, we have a guest speaker all the way from China who uh, uh, came in, uh, I guess, a week or two ago. Brock, when did you arrive? Yeah, I don't know. She knows. Okay. <laughs> so landed, landed in L.A. and found your way to Iowa. And Brock is going to share his professional experience doing design in Asia and China this evening and uh, some personal experiences uh, also in China. So we're happy that he would come all the way here to uh, share them with us. Let me tell you a little bit about Brock Smith. You can read about it on the website. But uh, in case you haven't looked at the website in a few days, uh, Brock Smith's a theater-trained, hands-on designer with over 20 years of experience in theater performance, costume prop, stage design, and construction before coming to Asia in 1992. Uh, beginning with exhibitions and events in Singapore, he's been involved in designing world-class expos throughout Southeast Asia and countrywide events, and I think he's going to be telling you about some of his projects this evening. Uh, moving to China in 1996, he has helped to create China's first world-class water park in Shanghai and interiors for Asia's largest aquarium in Pudong. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. And Correct. was also a principal designer for Happy Valley Beijing, China's largest theme park to date. So he's been working on some interesting projects, in fact, before class. We were talking about a new project in Siberia that's an aquarium and a department store. And so in the Q&A, uh, feel free to ask him about questions on his project. So please welcome Brock Smith. <clears throat> Hi. I'm Brock. Like the vegetable broccoli, Brock Smith. Um, they call, in China, they call me Lao Bu. Lao Bu. Let me uh, um, justify that one. Lao means old, okay? You know, if somebody's smaller than you, you call them Xiao, which means younger than you, okay? Like Xiao, but I'm older, so they call me Lao Bu, okay? And a, Bu is actually a, 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 a bastardization, can I say that here? Yeah, I did. Um, of the, the word Buraka, which is their, their name for me. I'm, to them, I'm Buraka Schmitze. Okay, so I say, come on, give, give, do something else. So they say, okay, buraka, buraka, bu, bu, how about bu, lao bu. So buraka means torn cloth, so actually lao bu means old rip. Okay, so that's me. Anyway, what justifies me in, as an authority on China is that I've lived there for 14 years, and uh, I've uh, competed within the system, within their system, not our system, their system, our system being America, right? Okay, and uh, see this, this young student here, the very young one? Uh, he was made in China. And uh, Connor, go back to mom. Anyway, uh, I watched, a, I watched a, a Go Cyclones. Look at that. I saw you guys teach those Texas boys a thing about football. Okay? So does that endear me to your heart? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I'll tell you what. Um, we got a little bit, of something quickly about me. Um, I'm not, I, I'm self-taught, everything, self-taught. I did go to school, but um, um, what I have to share with you is not something that can be taught in school necessarily. I, I, when I work on site, I go straight to the engineers. I don't go to marketing, sales, I don't go to any of that. I go straight to the engineers. Because uh, those are the people that I respect and, and uh, work with. Uh, um, technically, I'm an imagineer. Um, imagination plus engineering. And because they asked me to, to design everything and anything. And that's what I do. And I'm going to show you some samples of that. But it's not the design that's important. Because you could, 
you could design, um, you could design, I don't know, you could design anything. But uh, unless you can build it, unless you have the people to communicate properly with in order to build it, your designs mean nothing. It's just on a piece of paper. It's just theory. And theory, I'm sorry, what is theory? Unless, it's, uh, unless you can apply it, it means nothing. So please, I'm going to first qualify myself with you, and then uh, I hope to open it up to question and answers, please. But if I can answer anything as to how you're going to do it, how are you going to survive in this world? How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Because you got some heavy competition out there. You got some heavy duty competition in the Chinese, and they don't have the same they don't have the same sensors that you have. They're going to win. There's there's some things that you got to learn. And now I'm not I'm trying to be apolitical, and I'm not going to go to that that area, because I'm not qualified. But um, <clears throat> anyway, please question and answers. All right. So um, um, I was born in Los Angeles, outside of Los Angeles, and uh, um, I lived with my father, who's an illustrator uh, in New York for a little while, and then I lived on my grandmother's farm in Oklahoma, and then I ran away from my at 16, and I lived in a commune with a bunch of hippies in Oregon, and then I said, oh, well, I'm going to go to Hawaii, so I went to Hawaii for 15 years. I was living in Hawaii, and then I started uh, and, uh, getting interested in the Asian culture, and uh, from Hawaii, I, I, I had a doll factory in the Philippines, and uh, um, also went to Tokyo and worked with uh, Nippon Television, bringing over talent and performing in, on, on uh, there. And, and, and then I, I ended up, uh, 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 I was working in Hawaii drawing caricatures on the street, right? People's faces for 90 cents a shot, right? And I said, okay, I, I better go to school. So I went to school at 35. And you know, four and a half years later, I said, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of this place. And so I went to Singapore and started, and the, the, what the drawing became exhibitions, and exhibitions uh, require real dimension and structure. And, um, and then uh, I got an offer to do something in China, and I went to China. And that was my first project in China was 1996. And that's 14 years ago, for those who you uh, can't add. And um, where were you 14 years ago? You, in the orange shirt, baseball cap, where were you 14 years ago? S school, like grade school? OK, you were still drooling, right? OK. I hope that qualifies me a little bit. OK, so <clears throat> let's start here. Please. And Nate's working the camera, and I hope he gets my best side. All right. Um, Oh, I don't, I don't really like this podium, if you don't mind. You don't mind? Did I get a, OK. All right, uh, Chris back there, and Paul and, and JD were, were, I mean, DJ were all OK. OK, so I'm going to push the first button, right? China. Now, um, zip. OK. China, it's kind of shaped like a chicken. <laughs> you know, if you can't remember anything else, remember that, hey, do we have any Chinese here? Niemann Hao, so, G Hao, Shi Fu Shi, Ni Shi Tao, Niemann Shi Tao, Shi Fu Shi. See, I'm not lying. See, 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 see. We got authority already. Okay. Now, for those of you who went through grade school, you learned that that uh, the creators of the civilization. There's four of them, right? And uh, can you see it behind me? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the Egyptians and the Babylonians and the Hindus and all that. They're pretty much like. Not like they used to be, but China's the same. Okay, so <clears throat> that's about 5,000 years. And uh, they don't have the Jewish people in here, but China's the same, 5,000 years. So we got 5,000 years of culture here. Maybe, maybe we could learn something. I'm not pushing China. I'm just saying that maybe there's something to be learned. All right. Uh, this is modern China. <clears throat> and uh, oh, this guy, Mao. Now, um, I had a panel before here, and, uh, but it didn't come up, and, and I'll explain it. Uh, um, Mao Zedong, does anyone know who Mao Zedong was? People have heard of this guy? OK, he's been replaced by uh, the colonel from KFC. I'm ki I kid you not. The children of China know more about the colonel than they do Mao. And if that doesn't tweak you somehow, I don't know what will. OK, so Mao, Mao said, oh, the people, one community, all race, uh, classless society, right? Classless. 
first, uh, let me go back. I'm going to try to dis dispel some myths first, qualify who I am, and then I'll show you my work, where I've been, and then, you go, then say, you'll say, okay, maybe this guy knows something, then you can ask a question. You might ask some silly questions, so what I'm going to say now, we'll get rid of all the silly questions, hopefully. All right? Like, Lao Bu, why? Okay. So, <clears throat> China has about, uh, uh, about 1.6 billion people, all right? Shanghai itself, uh, depending on where you draw the circle, has um, a population of the uh, Canada, the country of Canada. Beijing, again, where you de 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 draw the circle, has the population of Australia, all right? A small town has maybe two, three million people in it. It has uh, two or three million people. It doesn't qualify for a train or an airport. Thank you. So <clears throat> imagine that. Anyway, the real wealth of China is, uh, is in this area here, the eastern coast. You probably all already know that, which has about the population of the United States, 300 million. All right? Then there's the secondary cities. All right? They're, they're coming along. Okay, now the, the, there's a disparity, and I, I and please for the Zhong uh, Guoren, you know, if I'm incorrect, I'm sure you're going to tell me later. Okay, my wife's right there; she'll probably agree with you, and we can go out for dinner. Okay, there's a disparity of wealth. <clears throat> you see, there's a happy worker there, and the, the circle is uh, uh, people picking up uh, some stuff to probably sell or eat. <clears throat> uh, uh, expensive car, low-grade homes. Check out this. People with pools on their balconies and tennis courts right next to the normal people. All right, it's not a class of society anymore. It's it's the wealthy and the and the poor and the and and that is why. And I'm not going to get political, but that's why China needs America to keep the people uh, moving along, to keep the to keep the income coming in, because <clears throat> the people are like a sleeping dragon. They're like a sleeping dragon, and there's only like 12 guys who run the whole country. <laughs> So they're, they're afraid, they're afraid if uh, the people aren't fed and housed, uh, they're, going to, they're, they're going to turn it, China's not going to be what it, we, you know, what it is. It's an oligarchy. All right. Um, <clears throat> the old and the new. And, uh, and uh, if you had in your head the, the, uh, the colonel, the uh, KFC guy with Mao, you would understand this picture. Um, the young people, they have, a, they have a new way of seeing things, a new way of seeing things. It has nothing to do with the, the principles of Mao or or uh, it has only all, everything to do with commercialism, with what you can do, with what you can make, with what, what's your function, what's your practicality, what can you build? Okay, rural China again, we'll talk about rural China. It's mostly agriculture. These pictures are taken by me, okay? Uh, on, on, the, the left, on the left is a, <clears throat> a very interested water cow, one that similar to the one that lives in my wife's village. And on the right, is a, a ceremonial uh, pig and a, a, a rooster. Um, um, later, we cut it up and, and, and celebrate. Um, <clears throat> that's a tractor. This is a house uh, that we just finished building. And that's this, the guy with the red shirt in the center is my employer. And he's celebrating his father's 70th birthday. So we built this house, uh, which was the house that he was born in, the guy in the white shirt to his, to his, uh, his, uh, his older brother. <clears throat> uh, these are uh, uh, farmers. I'm sure you've seen lots of pictures of China. This is uh, on the island of Hainai. Uh, it's called uh, Chinese Hawaii. And as you can see on both sides of the frame, the women here are washing their clothes in the river. OK? This is, this is uh, four hours' drive out of Hong Kong, right? <clears throat> Some happy old people who knew a better way, who knew a different life. And China is really beautiful. It has some very, very beautiful country. Very, very beautiful country. Astounding. And the young people, the young people, they're thinking different, although this is still a, a, a farming situation. Look at this picture. These are guys that are happy to have a job. They're happy to work. None of them are dressed nice. They have sandals. The alpha male in the center with the wheel tr wheelbarrow and the haircut uh, what is he carrying in his wheelbarrow? He's got a water bottle. He's got a hoe. He's got a tea kettle. They're happy to have a job. We're talking about an attitude here. They're grateful to be working. All right? And they were working on one of our projects. 
Now, then there's the old guys who wander into the wealthy centers, and they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. They don't know how, how to work. They're too old already. They're kind of falling through the cracks, falling through the cracks. So this guy used to wander around on our site. He wanted to be part of it, but he's, he's already old, and the old people become invisible, and that, that, that happens in our country too. Anyway, this fellow here, this old fellow, he's like 80 years old, and he found something to do. There's no retirement in China. That's my point. There's no retirement. There's no Social Security in China. There's no somebody working pro bono to, to justify your existence in China. You either do it or you don't do it. You do it or you die. And you know what? Something's interesting when, when, when presented with that sort of a quandary is that uh, you get creative. The mother of invention lives and thrives in China because they have to. You don't get carried in China. You don't get carried in China. You work, and I'm happy about it. And there's the, the, the children on, on the other, is this the right side, the right side of the frame? They're in the same town. They want to go. They're not going to stay in that little town. They're looking for the future. They're looking to the future. The future. It's a glorious future. Can you imagine? Can you imagine sleeping on a wooden bed? Excuse me. Excuse me. Sleeping on a wooden bed and watching television and seeing people driving fast cars and going to the bank and you're, you're eating rice and chili. They all want to move to the town. They all want to, they, all, they have incentive. They have drive. They know it's important. They know what's worthwhile. They're different than us. And you, you as young people, young engineers, that's your competition. What are you going to do? You're going to rest on your laurels? No way. There's no chairs for laurels in China. And their children are beautiful. They're people. They're not your enemies. They want, just like us. They want a life. They have dreams. They love people. Okay, modern China. Excuse my, excuse me. I get some, you know, I'm, you know, theatrical background. Remember? Okay, this is the city I live in. Oh, by the way, that's Hong Kong. Okay, and this is the city we live in, which is Xinjiang, 40, 40 minute uh, train to uh, Hong Kong, right? Uh, it's a new city. Uh, last month they celebrated their 30th year. And uh, it was made with Beijing money. The, the, the Mandarin said, okay, Hong Kong's on its way out. Let's build a huge port right next to Hong Kong. Okay, so they used, built this whole city, a whole city next to Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is, like now it's a tourist center. I mean, it still has products coming and going, but Xinjiang is usurping, and that's a good word for it, the vitality of Hong Kong, all right? And this is the Capitol building in Xinjiang. <clears throat> Some construction shots. They're ready for a future. This is a, this is a DVD store. They're looking at uh, 3D television. They're ready. They want to go. Man, they're excited. They're excited. Look at, look at this guy. These guys. U.S. Army on this guy's shirt, right? And, of course, every, everything in that store is pirated. Everything. Everything. And, um, and, but they treat it like their products anyway, which brings up the subject of intellectual copyright, right? They're, it, forget it. Forget it. If you think you made something and it's great, you, can, you could say, oh, this is mine. This is mine. You can hoard it. And, but they're going to take it anyway. It doesn't, principle doesn't mean anything for that. And uh, why? I mean, it's the, it's the Serengeti Plain. You can't, the hyenas are going to come and get the, not to say that they're the hyena, okay? But the hyena is going to come and get the lion's kill. It's going to happen. That's nature, all right? There's only one way, only one way that you're going to succeed in such a, a, an environment, and that is to remain creative, to keep moving forward, to design new things, to become a better engineer or architect or wh whomever you might be. Building, building, golf courses. I had to learn how to design golf courses. I hate golf. I'm sorry. I think it's a waste of resources, but I had to learn how to design one, okay? This is an old amusement park, newer amusement parks, even newer amusement parks. They have, they have money now. 
in that, that, not in the hinterland, but on the, the East Coast, they have disposable income, leisure, okay? Big project like this dam. My wife and I went through this dam. It took five hours to go through this dam. It's 10 times the size of Hoover Dam, okay? And, of course, Disney's there. And in 2012, Disney's going to start again in, in Shanghai. All right? This is Hong Kong. And that's a sure sign of uh, a middle class. And we Americans love to go there, and they show us what, what uh, they think uh, we should see. Rightfully so. And this is the Great Wall, and I'm telling you that, that this Great Wall has all been redone. It's been redone. It's actually theatrical. It's not, it's not the thousand-year-old structure that it really is. I've, I've been, my wife and I have been to places where it's real. It's, it's a meter wide, and you know, it's, you gotta navigate it. It's, pile of rocks, but not here. And Americans come, and God bless us, and, well, we're having a great time. Oh! Wait, do I see that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, that didn't exist. That's just a joke. <laughs> Let me say it again. Good joke. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, this is Pudong. Pudong. And uh, already there's a... Uh, um, DJ, this is the this is the green pointer down here. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. There's already this is this is a 88th floor, the Hilton Hotel, tallest hotel in the world. Already there's a building taller than it right here, and one going up that's even taller than it right there. This is the showcase to the world of just how far China has come, and it's on the dog uh, leg turn, the outside turn of uh, the Huap, Huangpo River which is 5,000 miles long, 5,000 kilometers long, okay? And across the, the, the river is uh, where the, the French and the British built uh, um, um, their, their banks and in the 30s when uh, uh, Shanghai was... I'm not going to get into Shanghai, okay? Anyway, pretty cool, huh? Buildings. Look at that. That's, a, that's the on-ramp, 10 floors high to the bridge going, going across the river. Is the future uh, area that same. This is their model, okay? And there's... You know, there's still the old attitude of the rice bowl. You know, if, uh, the government's going to take care of me. You're going to ask yourself that. Or are you going to be an entrepreneur? That's my point, all right? This guy is collecting uh, plastic bottles at a beach, okay? This is, a, this is an example of leisure. Let's all go to the beach and then hide in the shade, okay? Beach shot. Oh, by the way, this lifeguard here, there was a death last year because the life lifeguard wasn't on duty. He let the guy drown. I have so many stories. You think this guy is going to go floating in this tube? No, he's standing there to sell it. Somebody's going to bu come by with a car and he's going to sell that tube for, for enough money to buy half a bowl of rice. He's an entrepreneur. He takes whatever he can and does something with it. My point. Young people, they're, it's happening, man. China's happening. And I, I bet our Chinese uh, uh, people here, they're going to go back. They get special incentives to go back and work in China because now they know. And I'm not saying like they're insinuating that they're spies or anything. I'm not saying that. Okay? I have lots of friends that have come to America and then gone back, and they, they get a lot of, a lot of they, they do quite well because they have both. They know both worlds. Bye, 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 bye. <clears throat> a lot of this happening. A lot of this happening. Bye, bye, bye. I'm not an advocate of consumerism at this to this degree, but uh, it exists, and I have to, it, we have to start with what is real. What is what is real? What is existing? Okay, been there. I don't know why. I, this one didn't come out either, but uh, it shows uh, the map of um, China. I've been to the east, been to the, I've been all over the China, 14 years, been everywhere, and I'm going to show you some pictures. This is uh, my wife, uh, Paul, this is the, the pictures, you know, of the, the this, uh, we traveled a little bit, this is my very unhappy wife in the helmet. She's scooting along in the sidecar, about six inches of her butt above the ground. She didn't like that too much, and we didn't have this very long, because uh, <clears throat> this, you know, the boss is the boss, right? 
So we traveled a lot around China like this, and uh, this is in Beijing. I'm going to show you some shots of China that I took to justify that I've been there, okay? This is uh, um, uh, outside the Forbidden City, uh, the Summer Palace, excuse me, Summer Palace. Uh, more Beijing shots. Um, fresh vegetables on the street. Uh, Beijing, there's my lovely wife is in there. And oh, excuse me, that, this, this one's Hong Kong. Sorry, I got them a little mixed up. Uh, barbers on the street, uh, vegetables on the street, uh, weighing things. Life is on the street from nine months to 90. Life is on the streets. It's right there. It's right there. Okay. Um, uh, this, this, interesting sh this, this is an interesting one. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, the worker stadium, and these are all selling stalls. People are all making money. This is the worker stadium in Beijing, a place where, where the government was supposed to take care of you. Now, of course, it's not now. It's, an, it's a form of enterprise. It's an area of enterprise. Uh, these are bugs you can eat if you want to eat bugs or bunny rabbits. You know, these aren't bad. The beetles, you know, sautéed in the proper oil. Okay, this is uh, food in Chindu. They like to serve it in like a lot of little plates. People, there are people. There's little boys taking a leak, right? My, I can't stop my wife from, my, you know, mine takes a leak on the street now. What, what, kind of, what am I supposed to say? Nap time in China, siesta. Between 11.30 and 1.30, everyone shuts down, shuts down, especially in southern China. This is a, a farm in uh, uh, Xinjiang, or uh, rural Guangdong. Children, people, folks, good folks, good folks, good folks. Country folks. This is a graveyard. This is how they bury them in their, on their farm, on their property. They love flowers. Shanghua. They love to, flowers are wonderful. There's a sensitive element to the Chinese. The music, flowers, there's something very sensitive about them. If you can open it up, if you get close, if you can become family, you find that to be true. They're not hard people. more country folks. Now this is a picture on, I use it for my book. I actually wrote a book right here. I'm going to push it a little if anybody wants an autographed version of it later. Anyway, uh, it's, uh, this is kind of a tweaky look at Mickey Mouse. Um, he's been nailed to a, uh, he's been welded to an iron gate on the outside of a grammar school and he's painted really bad and I liked him because my book is called The Tragic Kingdom or prisoner in a Chinese theme park, because I was once they held my passport in the, in the late 90s. They wouldn't let me go. This woman's puking in a bag on the bus. Okay, no, nobody, nobody uh, you know, so what? She pukes. It's a human function. You know, who cares? No one's paying any attention to it. Um, and the boys there in that, in that, they live in a village. 30 years from now, you may meet somebody like that. What are you going to say to them? How's your experience going to be better than theirs? How are you going to be tougher than them? How are you going to work with them? This is a typical uh, dinner uh, in Guangdong. And the upper right is dog, which tastes a lot like beef. And uh, pig intestines and chicken feet. And, and I just ate the tea and the rice that day. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've been in northern China. This is near Siberia. Um, more northern China, they, uh, they shop underground. This is in uh, Pinyang, which is near Beijing. It's a very old city, very old. More peeing in the street, excuse me. And uh, this is a prison where they do horrendous, they used to do horrendous things. This is where they invented money and they had to ship money, so they had, the Kung Fu was pretty much invented in this area. And look at that wall. It's so old that the, the, the bricks have mollified and they've, they've returned to their original state of mud, right? But it's still used. They still use it. Uh, there's, there's us again. And this is a tea farm in uh, uh, southern China. A tea tree grew right up, split that rock. It's a very old tea farm. Okay, now it's a theme park. Um, this is Tibet. This is Lhasa. That's me, the fat guy there in the middle, walking down Main Street. Uh, this was before digital photographs, okay? Uh, I had a, a penchant for, uh, I, like to, I like to take pictures of doors. Uh, you know, it's the, call it the artist inside me. Um, a lot of colorful doors. 
doors, okay? There's a little child there. She was singing songs for some money. Anything. Give me some money. I'll give you something back. I'm singing songs. So she sang her song. If you look under her foot, she has a, um, um, a jowl. I gave her a little bit of money. She held it under her foot, and then she went to town with a little song, with a little red, white, and blue hat. Think of the spirit. Think of the spirit. The spirit of entrepreneurship here. What do you got? This temple is 1,200 years old. These ladies are 1,200 years old. No. <laughs> that, this, uh, um, this is the, uh, this is the, I think it's the sixth Dalai Lama. That's his car. Okay. <laughs> um, abject poverty, sense of humor. <laughs> hand in hand. How can you beat it? I'm poor, but I'm happy. This is in Wulamuchi. This is near uh, uh, Kazakhstan. Okay, it's an Islamic. And uh, he's carrying his house right there. That's his house is on that camel, those camels right there. And this is the taxi service right there. And uh, I asked my wife to marry me in not a mountain here, by the way. This is in Kanas, which is on the border of uh, uh, Russia and M Mongolia and Kazakhstan. People, uh, uh, rug farmers. I'm rug, not farmer. Rug merchants, as you can see. I'm going to try to go a little faster here. Okay, people, people, people. <clears throat> this is. Uh, we did a project. Uh, we're trying to relocate the panda, the giant panda. Forty-seven of us went out into Wulong because I, I was responsible for building. A, a, they had a relocation program because uh, uh, the um, uh, what's that? The World Federation of Animals or whatever it's called. Uh, they said, "Hey, you can't keep these pandas here because what they were doing was that they they take a panda." And these are the, the Tibetan guides that would take us out in the forest. They take a panda. This is a female panda. She's in heat, okay? As soon as, and they have a, a college student sitting right next to the chair, you know, and, and when, she, when she starts, she starts squealing because they never see the actual uh, thing in, in, in the wild because, as I understand, pandas, two years, uh, every two years they come in heat, so it's hard to, you know, follow this little panda wait for two years. So anyway, when they, they keep her captive, and when she starts squealing, they, they pull her out, and they artificially inseminate her. Then they take her to a shed, and then they, they, she has the baby. Then what do they do? They take the baby, and then the baby panda, then they rent it out globally for one million U.S. dollars a year. Okay? Now, we were there because the Wildlife Federation said, hey, you got too many pandas. You better put them back in the wild. So my job was to, re to, to look at individuals and redesign a look, an area for them. So golf courses, panda relocation, whatever. This is us at a Hong Kong thing. That's just in Beijing. Okay, I've done that. But not only is it so great, there's also a lot of really dicey hotels I have to live in, really ugly places to be, but, you know, kind of garish and, and, and a lot of food. Who's that? And a, a lot of weird things to eat, and sometimes I don't know what I'm eating, but I don't care because um, I'm eating. A lot of very boring offices, very boring boardrooms. This is, I'm talking about the life there. It's not all exotic and wonderful. You got to get down to it, and then a lot of this. Okay, my work. I draw things. This is a theme park, 1996, in uh, first. Uh, wa it's a water park. The first year, the guys used their fruit of the loom as bathing suits. They didn't have bathing suits, okay? and the girls had one kind of bathing suit, which was a red, red thing with hoops, and they immersed in water, and it stretched down to their knees. And the guys, I mean, have you ever seen white briefs in, in water? It's not an attractive thing. Okay? <laughs> the, by the second year, they learned to wear them because we, we, we'd, we'd ace their butt. You know? can't go around the park like that. So anyway, <clears throat> I design it. These are perspective drawings, and then we build it. This park, in the lower, lower right, is uh, uh, six months. Six months later, we have that. Because in China, they talk about it for six years. They guangxi for position. And I'll talk about guangxi later. They maneuver for who's the power. Who's the power? How's it done? And then they say, oh, we're going to run out of money. We've got to build it. So they spend six months to build it. There's me on top of one of my dinosaurs. Yeehaw. <sighs> Publicist, I draw it. Then we build it. There it is, my drawing, the building. I had to teach myself this stuff. I didn't go to school for this stuff. I went to the University of Hawaii. 
I studied literature, all right? And I kind of faked my way through, right? Worked with the craftsman. There, see that, that guy there? He says, it goes right there. And I said, OK, we'll put it there. Costumes, uniforms, dancers' uniforms, whatever. This is uh, uh, inside uh, uh, um, um, the upper frame is the water park. The lower one is a, a sh uh, 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 an exhibit, another aquarium in Shanghai. This is, I don't, I, I'm computer stupid, so I have to hand draw this stuff, and then I give it to CAD operators, and they, they flesh it out for me because I'm, I'm computer stupid. Okay, So building, building, building. This is in the pan of relocation, building bridges. This is a resort. This is a, this is a theme park in Beijing. I see a lot of yawning happening here, so I better, this is a parking, uh, uh, this is a uh, shopping mall. This is a, a, an effect that uh, where water races down this mountain. This water is pumped up, and then it races down. It goes into this tank, and the audience is right here, and they get this big wave of water. It's an effect. It's called a disaster. You know, it's a whatever. I teach myself how to do it because it's required. I put myself into a position where I don't know how to work my way out of, except I have to work my way out of it. Try it sometime. Gamble. That's my point. Try it. Try it. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it was Goethe, but I think it was somebody similar. Um, almost Famous, the movie Almost Famous. You know where the little kid goes where the rocks are? You know? He's, uh, he says, uh, um, I think I, I'm paraphrasing, but uh, unearthly forces will come to your aid. Unearthly forces will come to your aid when you, you try the impossible. Try it. Go beyond the limits of your own imagination. Try it. Whatever they need, I'll, I'll design it. Okay? Giant birdhouses, exhibits. More exhibits, a butterfly enclosure, waterfalls. This is an elevated river. It's a lazy river that's in the sky. It's also used as an entrance. I told my grandmother, I said, Gram Grandma, I'm going to make the first elevated river in the world. She says, what are you going to do, pee in it? <laughs> Thanks, Granny. Statues. Art. They need art. I do the art. Again, you could do the art, but you've got to do the dimensions. It's got to be real. Can't just talk about it. This is the ant kingdom. This is, the, this is a rough. Later, I'd give something like this to a CAD designer, and we'd work together. Lots of drawings, a lot of details, lots of stuff, more stuff, more stuff, stuff. I also build models, because models are very, very important. 3D, in scale, mind you, in scale. More stuff, trees, bridges, things. I design it, OK? That's what I do. Interiors. This is a mountain. And actually, it's a roller coaster, this lower one here. It's a roller coaster. You may see it. You could you go to my website. It's listed on the bottom there. You can see this. Time Magazine and whatnot. Drawing, drawing, drawing. This is the panda thing. I threw in, this is kind of, this kind of was not very nice of me, but I threw in a, um, uh, one of those things, a conveyor belt system into the mountain so people wouldn't like actually traipse their way through the panda relocation centers. But uh, you know, it didn't work. They didn't go for it. Trails, whatever. This is uh, inside of a roller coaster, the outside. This is the, the, the art drawing. And this is the, the real drawing of it. And I have others, of course. You can go on my website. And models of that same roller coaster, the exterior of the roller coaster. Me working with the Chinese. That's me, that guy. Okay, this fellow here is named Wong. And this is the end product for that one. It's a roller coaster, you know. It doesn't save the world or anything, but it's physics applied, right? This was kind of cool. It's a Mayan theme, right? Except the Germans invented these, this uh, uh, big gondola. And they said, you can't do that, you know. They can't, so they they remove my my snake tail because it would cause too much vibration. So I failed with that one. But it, this is a, a concept of a, a pyramid restaurant. There's the model I built in scale and the concept drawing, and there it is. There it is. When you build, when you think of something, you build it. 
it's so gratifying. It's not the end of the story, because we're, we're much more than what we do, philosophically speaking. But um, it still is gratifying. Me with a female staff on site. Made friends, good friends, lifetime friends. This is, uh, this is the company I'm employed with now. That's my boss, OK? That's my enemy, OK? <laughs> Meaning he was an artist, and uh, he thought he knew better than me. But he didn't. There's me with my dog, OK? So have I qualified myself as somebody who knows something about China yet? Have I? There I am. You don't have to applause. Please don't. I'd rather. And uh, there's the book. Autograph copy if you want. I'm charging 20 bucks. Okay. I'm not. You don't have to. Okay. I understand your students. Okay. Now, I'll go back. To, uh, uh, I don't know how to go, uh, DJ. I don't know how to go to the original. But please, I'm open. We have 20 minutes. What can I do for you? Yes, sir. Patience, patience, because it's not, it's not my way. I wanted to do it always my way really quickly. And uh, their process of, uh, there's so many people there that they have to go through so many minds and, and, and talk about it that I had to develop a, a sense of patience. And, of course, uh, work my butt off. Back there. Um, hi, I was just wondering, um, I'm also a design student myself actually, um, I was wondering how involved you are with the design process and if you had a specific um, group of like civil engineers or hydrologists or interior designers that you worked with on your team like continuously or else with each project that the people that were there like, like these are the people we want to work with and so you had to work with them and how you dealt with that. Okay, I think you're saying uh, is, is there teamwork involved? Yeah, like I know like there is but I was wondering like for you do you work with the same group of people? Like, do you always go same people, or does you see that change? Okay, in 14 years, I've worked with many different people. All right, but this is how it goes in, in China now. Is much like they do it here. Thank you for your question. Uh, Disney itself has let go 25, a 25 year old, 25 people have been with the company for 25 and 30 years. They don't need them anymore. They only hire engineers and designers as needed. Okay, you're contracted. Which brings forth an interesting uh, uh, truth that uh, we're all we're all just contractors. We're all contractors. You can't you, you you don't put on a company and say, okay, I'm happy now. I'm 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 in a company now. You know, I'm going to do it. It's, everybody's replaceable. Uh, yes, I work with uh, others and uh, and I take their opinion uh, very seriously, especially the engineers, and the civil the civic uh, engineers and you know the, the lengths of concrete and 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 rebar necessary to span a bridge or a, uh, yes. Of course, of course. And right now we're doing a butterfly house in Siberia, so I better darn well listen to the guys who are doing the life support systems for the butterflies. Otherwise, I make this nice thing and all the butterflies are dead, right? You know, so that's one be very good for my reputation. Next. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Put <laughs> English. Okay, English. Uh, in the beginning, uh, you said uh, 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 design means nothing if you don't, you can't work with the people. Can you give us an example? And uh, the question one and the two is, uh, uh, you said they ha they don't have the same sensors. They're going to win. What do you mean by same sensor? And uh, uh, third question: uh, East and West, you have traveled far and uh, 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 a lot of places in China, does this uh, knowledge of both East and West come into your design and how? Thank you. You mean, are you saying the East, and we'll do the third question first, do the East and West are like the same? Yeah, you, you, have, you lived, you're born here, and you're in Hawaii, and you, have a, you, you traveled much okay, in the West, think, and also in China. How does that come into I your think, design? I think what you're saying is principles. Okay, now we're, I was talking about this with uh, Professor Rectanus. Um, um, in physics, there are principles, correct? In metaphysics, there are principles as well. All right? I don't know where you're going to go with that philosophically, but if you are not true, if, you're, if you work against the principles of physics, you will fail. If I do a pirouette and I don't do it correctly, if I don't balance myself, I'm going to fall on my butt, okay? But the same with metaphysics. If I don't regard the, the truth, 
and hard work and the things your mother taught you, your dad taught you, if I'm not true to those, they don't work. And that, that's the same in China. The principles that, that are here also exist there because they're universal. Uh, uh, as far as an example of uh, doing, I've done so many projects, and, and they were just blown away because I'm, uh, they, wanted, they bring in the, the Lao Wai, the foreigner, okay, and I'm, a, I'm a, just a showcase because they actually got other things going on. They don't want to build it. They want to make a, a nice presentation to offer up to the bank, you know. Here's the nice presentation, and the bank gives them a lot of money. And then they either run away with it or they talk about it or they keep the, the wheels in motion. So there's a lot of things that I design. R remember, being an engineer or a designer isn't the, end of the, isn't the end of the spectrum. It's just the beginning. I mean, the, whatever, whatever, you, whatever you hold for yourself as being more important, it's not. It's the managers and the marketeers and the, the developers and the government bodies that, that far outweigh our own sensibilities. So you have to find your own your own uh, level of uh, aptitude that, that you believe in. And, and your first question, I don't know if I, I, I remember it. What is, uh, you is said, uh, you, you, you almost, uh, you open, opened your, your presentation by saying design means nothing if you don't uh, right, uh, work right. with the people. I mean, look, yeah. Okay, I got an idea. I'm gonna build, I'm gonna, I got, it's a clothespin, right? It's this, I'm gonna, it's this clip, it's got a piece of wood and metal on it. You know, it's gonna hang my clothes. My clothes are going to dry. You know, uh, you know I'm, no, I'm not going to bother with it. I'm not going to bother with it. Oh, so I come to sh work with a dirty shirt because I never really, I, I never invested in it. I never actually went through the process of discovery. You, know, you need to go through the process of discovery. I, I feel that way in order to, in order to uh, uh, relive the, ex the, the experience. In order to get greater, you must live through the process. The process is everything. The, you know, it, take about the, think about the golf swing, okay? And I, I don't play golf, but if you just hit the ball, that's nothing. You've got to follow through, right? That's what they tell me. You've got to follow through. The process, the process is much more important. You may fail. You may fail miserably, but you can move on. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I've kind of bumbled my way through, but, uh, you know, I'm a bumbler. More? We got 12 minutes. Come on. What about, what do you think of Chinese girls? No. Hey, you said you hate golf, but what was your favorite part of doing the golf course? You know, uh, what, what, you know, I shouldn't say hate because a lot of people do it. I, you know, I think it's a shameful, I'm sorry I said hate. Sorry I said I, I, It's a shameful use of resources in my personal opinion. That's my personal opinion, okay? Um, the most interesting thing about a golf course is that, you know the sand traps? If you, if you, like, let's say you, you could curl up a sand trap, right? You pull it up, and underneath you're going to see a, a, a fish bone, like, you know, a, a bone fish, like, uh, of PVC pipes that are drains. The whole thing is a series of drains. When I go to a project, the first thing I do is talk to the engineers about Poshway, the drains. Where's the water coming from? Where's it going? Golf courses, the drainage is the most important thing that I know of, and the most interesting part of a golf course are the drains. The last interesting, and in China, in China when you go to a golf course, the, the caddies are beautiful women. You know, try to get angry. Next. Uh, can you comment on um, the whole stranger in a strange land thing? Like, um, how many doors were opened or closed strictly because you looked and act American? Stranger in a strange land? Is that the Heinlein that reference? That's a book I read 40 years ago? You know, when I was a hippie? I didn't even know there was a book. You didn't know it was a book? <laughs> Somebody educate this guy. <laughs> yes, it's a book. Read the book. I think it's Robert Heinlein. Is it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. See, talk to that guy right behind you. He knows a stranger in a strange land. Now, what's your question? Give me that mic. Um, I mean, it's, it's a very homogenous culture. Um, my buddy that interned there said he was literally one in a million. Only white guy in a city of two million people, he thought, he thinks. Yeah. Um, can you comment on like how many doors were opened or closed just because you looked and act American? Oh, well, you know, I could be a model. They could set me in front, uh, and I had a, employers that would put me there, and for two years I traveled around China. He said, keep your mouth shut. God, that upset me. He even kicked me under the table if I started to have an idea, right? I didn't like it. I didn't like it. So that has happened a lot, yes. Okay, but what am I going to do about it? I quit, and then I work for somebody where I can use my craft. All right? And as far as doors opening and closing, that's philosophical. I personally believe that when one shuts, another opens. But you have to be there with your eyes open. 
and you can't expect it because it comes from somewhere else that you want. I don't know if that answers your question, young man, but please read that book. It's very interesting to read. That guy behind you knows about it. Yeah. Give that guy a mic. Don't hesitate. Let's go. Um, I just want to know how you overcame the language barrier when you first got there and also well, how you know, um, Chinese have, see American manufacturers, like as it, like how American manufacturers in China have influenced their culture, or how they're seen. That's two questions, right? How do I overcome the language barrier? What language is music in? You read scores, right? Anybody can read it, right? I draw. I draw. And I go, I, 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 I use the metric system. So I draw. Everyone, <laughs> they don't understand what I'm saying? Look at the drawing. Kan tu hua, kan tu hua. And they'll look at the drawing, and eventually they'll understand what I'm talking about. And elbow to elbow, we're building bricks. You know, a, a brick is 60 by, a six, 60 by 120 by 57, not including the mortar. You know, what language is necessary? Drawing and you and you said about American manufacturing. Yeah, like how, how, how are they speaking? You, you know, you know, I, I'm I'm really a dark horse. I don't I don't, I don't like to be around a lot of Americans in uh, China or foreigners because they usually band up together and they like strength in numbers. I'm, I'm my boss is Chinese. I live in a Chinese neighborhood. My wife is Chinese. My son is half Chinese. Um, I'm in the culture. I'm invested in the culture, but I want to get out. I was looking for farms down south in Iowa, you know. I really want to get out. 14 years is enough. <laughs> I want a dog. I want to run in the woods. I want to get, you know, chiggers, you know, in places that are unmentionable, <laughs> you know. Next. I, I can't, man, I can't, you know, there's a lot, of the, a lot of European people just raping China, okay. A lot of Westerners, I mean by that. And a lot of, they're not just going in cold, they're being sold by, by developers. So, you know, you have to be careful. You've got to be there. If you're going to be invested in China, you have to be there. You can't just talk about it. You can't send somebody over there. You have to be there because, yes, sir. You have the mic? Um, I know what I want to ask, but I'm having a hard time articulating my question, so it's please okay. bear, bear with me. Um, there's uh, decidedly a... A, a capitalist influence uh, being introduced into China has been it's been happening for a long time now. Um, what has been your observation uh, in the effect of that um, on the social the traditional socialist okay. um, ad attitude of China? Gotcha. And do are are people starting to feel differently about each other? Uh, I ask because I'm not an engineer. I want to do humanitarian work. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll give you two examples. Uh, in 96, we were looking for vendors. Thank you for your questions. And, and uh, there was an old guy and there was a young guy, right? And we were looking for uh, fiberglass vendors to make big fiberglass products. And, and they're sitting in this old tawdry uh, out office, and the phone started ringing. Bring, bring, bring. And the, and the old guy was just sitting there looking at the phone, you know. Bring, bring, bring. And the young guy's on the other side, like, and the young guy was, bring, bring. He wouldn't answer it. The young guy finally jumped up and said, hey, give me that phone. The old guy had the attitude of the iron rice bowl, okay, where the government is going to take care of you. It doesn't work. You know, I know where this direction that this country is going, and I won't go any further than that. It doesn't work, and they proved it. So uh, the young guy picked it up because he was ready to make a deal. He's going to make a deal. He's going to make a compromise, Okay. Capitalism in, in, in effect is the law of the jungle, the Serengeti Plains. And, and it hasn't affected everybody. And there's a lot of talk. And there are people just like us that, that they, they talk more than they do. There's a lot of people like that. As far as humanitarian effort, go there and find out. Go there and find out. They're wonderful people. They're, they're giving people. On a personal level, they're very giving people. You'll, I don't know what the extent of your humanitarian efforts are, but um, also be careful because I've had NGO friends kicked out of China mm. for giving cows to uh, the females in Lhasa, in Tibet, to, uh, because the Tibetans were having a, a, a huge problem as a lot of uh, uh, sub subordinate cultures, I don't know if that's the right word, there's rape and incest and, and, incest and alcoholism and wife beating. And so uh, they're trying to empower the women because the women is the structure, the, from the women from the woman, especially in that culture, it's matriarchal. Um, 
uh, they have a cow, they could develop, uh, they could sell milk and products, and the men either have to get in line or get out. And if you'll allow me to follow up. Sure. Um, what I'm really getting at here is, I, I think you're talking about an entrepreneurial spirit in these younger people. Is that going to be enough to push out the subjugation and the censorship and the things that are government sponsored? And is it out with the old, in with the new? Well, take a look at it. It's happening. It's happening, of course. But uh, I, think, I, I really think the new is being redefined each day. And it's also a personal choice. It's very personal. I, I can't throw a blanket of definitions over all, all of this. I'm just one guy, spent 14 years, and I've survived because I've, I've competed in the system, and I've learned to be honest and hardworking and, and, and not to lie about my work. And that's a metaphysical principle that we were talking about earlier. So I, I, you know, your questions are nicely framed. I don't know if I'm answering them. So can we move to the next guy? I mean, I don't really know how there's a the Tough questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We got three minutes. Um, how did you establish yourself in uh, this field where you really had no experience previously in? Good question. I drew caricatures on the street. I always liked to draw. I made puppets. I made marionettes. I sold them in, 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 on the weekends to make extra cash. I, started, I was also a professional dancer, you know, believe it or not, for children's theater. And I, made, I started making uh, uh, um, uh, costumes. You know, ballerinas turned them into peacocks. And, 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 and then the, 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 the costumes became props props and then the props became sets and the sets became musical sets with lots of people dancing on them, right? And then I, I got to Singapore and, and the, the, the theatrical sets now had to have a longevity much, much greater than uh, two days, so uh, or a, two, two, a three show run. So I developed exhibitions and exhibitions are hard put uh, uh, building and structure and then that, that elevated, uh, that went to, into buildings. So it's just a logical progression. And, and does that answer it? Just, just I wanted to, I always wanted to more and learn more. I wasn't satisfied. I want to keep moving. I want to learn more. I still want to learn more. And you know what I've learned lately? That what I do is not important. How about that? I come right around. What I do is not important anymore. And that's when Professor Rectanus got a hold of me. You know, okay. Yes? Two more minutes? Yes, sir. Uh, why, in your opinion, does socialism fail? Did I say socialism failed? I did I say that? I think you implied I it. didn't say that. Don't put words in my mouth. I didn't say that. I said that in China, it's not working. The government can't take care of its people. Necessity is the mother of invention. You cannot rest on your laurels. If the, and I see evidence of it. You, you think that, uh, what, what is the word? What is the word? You, you think you're entitled? What are you entitled to? What? Your father's money? What are you entitled to? You're entitled to the experience called life. There's a bounty out there, a bounty that you could take from and drink and eat if you choose to do so. If you sit and think, oh, it should be given to me, damn you. You're going to fail. That's the process. That's my personal belief, and that's what I've seen in China. So I didn't say the word socialism. That's your word. But it definitely hasn't worked over there. And that's a pretty big chunk of socialism, and it hasn't worked in Russia either. So you tell me it's going to work, and you better, you better prove it. That's my personal opinion, OK? One more minute. 10 seconds. To your left. Yes, sir. <laughs> One picture that uh, stood out to me was um, uh, the building that had a whole bunch of swimming pools on the decks yes. and the uh, in the rundown area, literally yeah. right across the fence. Um, how much friction do you see between people that live on one side versus it's the other? It's really tenuous. Um, again, remember, they go to school and they learn about uh, the, the, the tenets of uh, communism, right? And then there's the single child. And, and the single child is thrown into a, a, a very, very uh, uh, competitive environment and secret lives in a competitive environment when you're supposed to be the king, right? And that, so they try to keep together, and, and, and then I can't really answer that totally because the culture's 5,000 years old. 
they, there's a level of acceptance that they have that we can't even conceive about life and death. There's a level there. And, and, and there's jealousy. There's jealousy about me being an American. There's, it, it boils to the surface on occasion. But, um, you know, and, and sometimes a peasant is run over, and I use that word because they use the word by a, a, a rich car. And this, okay, this is a story. I'll give you one last story, okay? Um, I'm in Beijing. There's, I'm in a DVD store. They're buying a pirate to DVD. I'm buying a pirate to DVD. Arrest me. You know, 60 cents, three days after Star Wars, you know. Uh, eat your heart out, George. So anyway, I'm looking at it, and on, on, on the other side of the plate glass is this, this guy, and he looks like, you know, 50-something. He's got these big, dark sunglasses. And, and he's, he's holding this teenage girl by the neck, right? And then I'm looking at him, what's that? And then he takes his arm and he goes, wham! Just belts her! Big time, right in the face, you know? And, she, and her nose is bleeding. And there's people everywhere. They don't do anything. They don't do anything. Nothing is done, right? Until this creep, and he, I'm sure he's a creep. He probably saw some, you know, he probably created, made some violation, infraction that she created, and he's going to take her home because he's an evil creep, okay? So he takes her to his car, which is across the street, okay? He tries to get her in the car. Immediately, a crowd develops. They won't let the car go. A mob justice is big in China. Crowd develops, and he starts getting nervous, you know, and, and then a spokesman comes forth and says, why are you taking that girl? What right have you to take that girl? And he gets on the phone. He makes a mock phone call. He eventually, he has to get in and drive off. There's a, there's, which leads me to believe, and I have other situations like that, that there's, there's a sense of justice because they're, they're humans. They're people, and, and they're, closer to, they're, they're, they're closer to the hand and mouth. When it's hand and mouth, when you don't have much and it's hand and mouth, the, the practical realities are much more important than, than the theoretical ones. I don't know if that helps. Good question. So I think that's all the time. I mean... Uh, I think Brock would be willing to answer individual questions after class. And um, Is this a class? Okay. <laughs> it's a First class! <laughs> supposed to be, anyway. And uh, thank you very much, Brock.